All right. Hey, good afternoon, folks. Once again, we are back taking a look at the tropics. Today is Tuesday, August 19th, 2025. This is your afternoon tropical update. We are watching Hurricane Aaron lumber just north of the Bahamas here today, along with two other areas of interest in the Atlantic Basin. Both of them are pretty far out. No immediate threat to the eastern U.S., but we're going to talk a little bit about Aaron and then kind of shape up where, you know, we're kind of going through the rest of the last 10, 11 days of August and how this might look as we open up Labor Day in the beginning of next month in the tropics writ large and what the U eastern U.S. could look at in terms of threats. So we'll go ahead and start with the Hurricane Center's map to get you oriented here. We have Hurricane Aaron, a Category 2 hurricane today with a, about a 960 millibar central pressure, moving north of the Bahamas at about 9 miles an hour. Movements more northwest right now and a more uh, north to northeast recurve expected over the next couple of days. We have a disturbance lumbering through the central Atlantic with a 60% chance of development and then another system that's just left Africa that's actually already tagged as an invest near the Cabo Verde Islands. This one has a pretty good chance to develop and then um, might have some trouble afterwards as it moves into the central Atlantic. So. Aaron up first. The National Hurricane Center's current forecast, a tropical storm warning has been issued for parts of the Outer Banks in North Carolina, and a tropical storm watch has been issued for just a little bit of uh, Virginia's coastline as well, and some of the southern part of like uh, Delmarva region, I think, uh, to Cape Charles Lighthouse in Virginia. Um, you know, a lot of these other ones are, are Outer Banks, you know, Cape Lookout, uh, Duck, North Carolina, Beaufort Inlet um, kind of region. So we, we are a little bit more confident that some tropical storm conditions are going to brush the Outer Banks. And as we talked about a couple of days ago, Aaron's kind of more westerly jogs kind of set this up to where we thought this was going to get pretty close, and it is. So there have been some mandatory evacuations for parts of the coastline of uh, the Outer Banks of North Carolina. And Aaron is a very large hurricane, current satellite presentation. It has gotten much larger over the last couple of days since we last talked. Now, Aaron is struggling today. There is some pretty clear indications of dry air getting in. You can see a frontal boundary laid out to the north of Aaron, and that dry air is wrapping around and up into the storm. There's uh, obvious chunks of convection missing on this north and west side of the storm. So it's still got pretty good inflow from the southeast, and it's got good outflow aloft with the cirrus canopy moving away. But the other, the out, the upper outflow channel has been cut off temporarily, so it's only got one outflow channel to work with right now. It's growing in size, which means it's going to have to pull more and more heat fluxes off the uh, ocean to, to continue to maintain its strength. And as storms get Get larger they typically get a little bit weaker in terms of maximum wind speeds so what we kind of slowly seen with Aaron's category four yesterday and as it grows larger it's kind of come down to like category two it does look like Aaron's going to make a little bit of a bounce back hurricane center does has this becoming a uh, well they had it becoming a major hurricane again they actually on the new cone don't have that anymore they're going to hold this right about category two intensity may flirt with category three intensity and uh, as it turns up and out of here, current uh, potential for tropical storm force winds for the Outer Banks, North Carolina, sitting at about 30 to 40 percent. If you look at the very far edge of the Outer Banks, um, that's kind of where your best chance are for sustained tropical storm force winds. But I would say that most of the Outer Banks and maybe the very southern part of that uh, Delmarva region could be looking at the potential for some tropical storm force gusts, at least expect scattered power outages, some minor coastal flooding, definitely some heavy coastal erosion. And as we've talked about with this, um, you know, surge, not really a big deal outside of these like Cape Lookout to Duck kind of region where two to four feet is possible. But minor coastal flooding, like tidal flooding is more likely with this setup in that persistent onshore wind just kind of piles the water up, you know, doesn't let that stuff uh, drain back out. And, um, but rip currents and dangerous surf really going to be the key here, guys. And especially as we talked about yesterday on the page, there's a lot of families vacationing and hanging out in these beach towns and beach cities that are, you know, for the kids go back to school. There's a lot of people, these beaches that don't know what rip currents are. They're not used to the water. They're not particularly great swimmers. Um, so it's a very dangerous situation to go through the next couple of days. And this rip current risk is not just North Carolina. It will be all the way down to Florida and up the East Coast, especially later in the week as Aaron's influence comes up there. So uh, please keep an eye on Aaron if you're on the coastline here. And note, even if you're not in the tropical storm water warnings, you could have some gusty onshore winds. And again, rip currents, high swells waves that kind of thing is going to be an issue this week as Aaron passes by but again confidence remains high that she is going to confidently shoot this gap between Bermuda and the Outer Banks thankfully it's going to stay far enough away from Bermuda to not have any direct impacts 
and just a brushing blow for parts of the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Let's go ahead and take a look at these other two systems out here. We are out in the MDR, a little bit off of Africa, again here on Tropical Tidbits, looking at the satellite presentation. We have two different systems on our hands. Uh, to the left here, we have not invest anything yet. We have this broad monsoon gyre trough that uh, is moving along. It's a very broad wave envelope lumbering off to the west. Um, this is partially an African easterly wave and a whole portion of the monsoon trough moving along with it. This is a very broad, very disorganized system. And although it looks like it's going to have a better chance off to the west to develop, it's going to take a couple days for that to organize. Talk about that first. And then we have a much more compact Invest 99L showing some decent uh, thunderstorm activity. Kind of unclear if we've got a close circulation or not. So, you know, it's it's definitely working its way there. And it looks like, you know, in the next day or two, this could have a decent chance to become a tropical depression or a short-lived tropical storm. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. So, again, uh, the big wave is the area in orange. This has got a 60 percent shot over the next seven days 10 percent over the next 48 hours looking at the gfs model as we bowl this in the view on thursday this is our wave right here uh, notice the wave axis orientation is very laid back so the wave axis kind of leans more towards like three o'clock on a clock instead of like upright like towards noon or 11 is what we would kind of more see when we would see these develop and um what we kind of know is this one's going to ride a little bit further south, and we kind of have it going into the islands on Saturday, but you see the wave axis more upright as we work into Saturday. And this is likely where we're going to see the vorticity concentrate, and we're going to see the storm actually form up. But I would I would caution that, you know, it, it wouldn't take much to have this form just a little bit further south, and some kind of semi-organized system may be moving into the northern Antilles, Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, maybe even parts of Hispaniola as we get through the weekend. And this could be a very heavy uh, rain threat here you know even these systems don't really you know pop in terms of winds they can produce a lot of rainfall and you just had Aaron come through and dump a bunch of rain on these areas and then within a week you're gonna have yet another heavy downpour from another tropical system so flooding threat definitely going to be an issue in the islands now it does look like the development is going to be a little bit slow the gfs really doesn't develop this until it gets past the islands and i, I think maybe it might be under selling the timing here um i think that it might have a better chance somewhere like right here to develop you see how it kind of you know it kind of shows that vorticity starting to concentrate it wouldn't take much for this to develop a little bit before the islands at least a weak tropical depression or tropical storm moving through uh, i don't think it's going to be a hurricane or anything super strong i think it's going to really take some time to organize but the water is a lot warmer on this side of the uh, MDR and you have a passing Kelvin wave that's going to help with this. So I think between those two factors, you will probably see this develop very close to the islands, if not just before, or just after. But a uh, general recurve pattern looks likely with this, assuming this north end of the envelope develops because Aaron up here is keeping this high pressure nose that's kind of stuck out right here, very suppressed. It's kind of eroding the west side of this high, and it's leaving this big weakness right here for this wave to find and turn into and leave up with Aaron. If Aaron was moving faster or more north, you might see that ridge rebuild and force this more to the west. But it looks like, even if that happens to a degree, that most of our computer models uh, Euro is highly, highly likely on a recurve right here. European model, very confident on that recurving forecast. GFS, not as sold. Uh, GFS shows a much larger ensemble spread where a group of ensembles takes this further west into the Bahamas and the um, you know northern Caribbean islands, whereas another group of models, especially the stronger solutions, are pulling this more northward. Certainly, the more strong solutions are going to favor that recurve pattern. A much weaker system might drift. And even sometimes in big trials, like this, you can see energy break off and move west. So we'll keep an eye on that to see what happens. I don't think it's like anything imminently threatening, but it is something we're going to have to watch to make sure we don't have any energy that gets away from us. And like you have a northern envelope develop and move north, and you have this like southern kind of piece break off. That can happen with big waves. We'll watch it. That may be what the model is picking up on to a degree or another. But again, pretty good confidence here that the most coherent part of the system will likely recurve. We're going to have this cold front laid out across the eastern U.S. next week. There's a good shot of cold air coming in. Uh, CPC graphics show this pretty well. Uh, as we look into the rest of the month, you're going to have multiple strong cold fronts leaving the eastern U.S. and uh, coming out into the eastern U.S. for August. So that's going to also likely keep multiple lows and fronts moving through, which should pick this up and move it away, hopefully, anyway. So um, this way right now, again, big rainfall threat for the islands. But as far as the eastern U.S. goes, not particularly worried about it as of yet. But we do have some things to watch, so we'll keep an eye on it. 
If we look at the other system out here today, again, a lot more organized already, much more compact um, moving off here. It's not really entangled in the monsoon trough or anything. But given the broadness of this trough, what's going to happen is you're probably going to have a nose of the SAL kind of nose down. And what's going to happen is this the system is probably going to dive a bit further south uh, following the lower pressure uh, trail left behind this first wave. And if we look at the current storm output here on Tropical Tidbits, we can see the first uh, super ensemble guidance shows this pretty well. It shows this, this latitude loss down almost 10 degrees north and then it runs it more westward for the couple days after that and I think that's what's probably going to happen. Um, one of the problems that this wave is going to run into is that shear is expected to pick up. So this wave is going to kind of miss the bus of what we've had for the last about three weeks, which is an MDR kind of favoring pattern where the pattern is going to favor storms leaving Africa and lighter wind shear. We saw Aaron. We saw this next wave. We saw the A wave in front of Aaron. Uh, but as we work into the next week, that's kind of going to kind of shut down. This is the average uh, background kind of shear and wind anomalies for next week in the MDR. And GFS showing a much more hostile pattern as we get into next week. And it also looks like if you look at the satellite presentation in this region, that some drier air is lurking to the north. And as this system dives down to 10 degrees north, this dry air will probably follow along with it as this big wave axis departs. And uh, I think that 99L is going to be dealing with some pretty hostile conditions next week. We also know that the Kelvin wave that's currently passing the Atlantic, we can see a, a very strong Kelvin wave signal here on these week to week chart runs here on the right side. And that Kelvin waves influence goes down quite a bit as we look into next week. So as our system dives down and is trying to move off, it's going to have a much more hostile background state in the Atlantic. So combine that with a much more dying off NJO as we look in that kind of phase three skip back into phase seven, there's a pretty good chance that this wave is going to struggle quite a bit. Most of our ensemble guidance for 99L shows very weak signal. Uh, European shows a pretty weak signal. GFS actually for this wave shows a very weak signal. And then it has yet another wave trying to pop off after that, it looks like. Um, so we will see how this plays out, but I think that this wave is going to be, uh, it's going to have a lot of work ahead of it if it wants to develop into something coherent and scary. So the only other thing I've kind of got for you guys today is if we're looking at pattern recognition things, we're looking at threats beyond these waves that we see here. I would say the Western Caribbean is going to be an area to watch as we work into next week. If we go back to the GFS 850, one of the things you see is a pattern response over the Atlantic. When you have a strong set of cold fronts that come off in August, you have this high pressure building over the Southeast US. We kind of get this monsoonal response down. You get a trade wind enhancement over the Western Caribbean and a vorticity enhancement over the Western Caribbean, Central Caribbean. And oftentimes you can see weak kind of sloppy lows begin to eject out of uh, Central America and South America and kind of like ride the edge of this periphery of the vorticity ribbon right here. And sometimes you can wind up with a situation where um, you kind of get what we call the ridge over troubled water. So you kind of have a sprawling high pressure kind of sitting out over here. You have your lower pressure response back here, and then you have broad low pressure, and then you have these little waves that start developing in here. And then when these kind of move out of the Caribbean and get into some lighter flow over the Gulf, sometimes you can get these little Western uh, Gulf, Western Caribbean homegrown systems that can be a problem. Sometimes they just rotate in Central America. Sometimes they rotate up into the, to the Gulf. It really depends. But that would be towards the end of the month, looking in towards like Labor Day weekend. I would be a little bit concerned about that, but it's pretty long ways out right now. Wouldn't be super concerned yet. Just keeping an eye on it. So that's kind of what I got for you guys today on your tropical update. So we got our two waves after Aaron. Aaron moves off. Wave one should follow Aaron. Wave two might wind up dissipating over the Atlantic. But as we go towards the end of the month, we're going to have to watch the Caribbean for some more homegrown, quote unquote, stuff as we kind of take a break from the African wave train and we kind of like set our sights back on the coastal U.S. for like short term development. And then we'll probably have another burst of African wave stuff at, as we work into September and the pattern kind of reloads and resets. So that's kind of what you're going to see over the next couple of weeks, more or less. So that's what I got for you guys today on your Tropical Update. As always, thanks for watching and have a good one.